From the terror of Boko Haram and ISWAP in the northeast to the rampage of bandits in the northwest, IPOB in the southeast and other militants elsewhere, Nigeria has suffered from a crippling security situation. On May 29, President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu will not only inherit the mantle of leadership from President Muhammad Buhari, but also the demanding task of ending Nigeria's myriad of security challenges. In over 10 years, Nigeria's security landscape has been shaped by war against insurgents such as Boko Haram and later the Islamic State West Africa province, ISWAB, and in the northeastern part of the country. New threat elements such as banditry and kidnapping have emerged in the northwestern region, while the age-old communal crisis as well as farmers and herders clashes have existed in many parts of the north central. And also under President Muhammad Buhari, secessionist agitations by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, in the southwest and parts of south-south have also snowballed into a major security threat that is threatening the country's unity. Joining us to discuss this is Darlington Momo Moru. He is former consultant to the Presidential Committee on Small Arms and Light Weapons, Prescom. Thank you so much, Mr. Momo, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. You, my pleasure of being here. Great. Mr. Momo, let's start by looking at the um, issues that have bedeviled not just the Buhari administration, but Nigeria in general. The president has talked tough about, um, you know, um, dealing with insecurity. We have seen um, the presidential um, um, advance team um, fleet being hit by um, some of these unknown gunmen. We've seen um, a defense college hit by these um, this terrorist. We've seen a lot of capturing in schools, broad daylight. We've seen all sorts of things happen under President Buhari's watch. Um, and, and then there was some sort of a, a pause during the elections. And here we are again. As we speak, there has been some communal clash in Plateau State, which has claimed some lives, and many are warning against a reprisal. What, is, uh, what does the future hold uh, for the Tinubu administration, even as he gets sworn in on Monday? Uh, thank you. Uh, a beautiful one. Um, I've spoken so much uh, concerning a uh, certain security agenda for uh, the Tinubu administration, as of today is still the president-elect. Mm -hmm. We've looked at, we've been looking at issues from all angles. First, we've looked at the problems, and then we've also, the problems that we'll be inheriting in terms of uh, insecurity. Mm. We're always, we're also uh, trying to look at possible solutions. And how to go about them. You just talked about the issue in Plateau State at the moment that has claimed well over 200 lives. Mm. And if we want to look at all of this put together, the level of insecurity we have across the country uh, differs across different regions. For instance, uh, the level of the kind of insecurity problem we challenge is conflict we have at the northeast is that of terrorism. Talking about the Boko Haram and the Iswa. If you bring it down to northwest, is that of uh, the bandits, a banditry. If you take it to north central, where you also have plateau state that you did mention, it's all about a communal uh, intercommunal conflicts intra-communal conflicts, religious, uh, religion conflict, uh, conflicts, and the header farmers conflict. Down to the south, you have southeast, the problem of the ESN, uh, the armed body of IPOP. Mm -hmm. uh, down south, the issue of uh, kidnapping, armed robbery. Down uh, southwest, the same thing as almost uh, as we will find in the South South. Talking about cases of kidnapping, cases of armed robbery, and all other vices, cultism, and the rest of it. But I'll tell you something. All of this put together are activities carried out by the non-state actors. Mm -hmm. And the non-state actors wouldn't be able to function without the proliferation of 
small arms and light weapons. Mm -hmm. The level of illicit uh, weapons, small arms and light weapons circulating in the country today is so high. Of course, you are aware, and most Nigerians are aware by now, that the amount of firearms, small arms and light weapons in the hands of the non-state actors far outnumbers what the state actors carry. If you're talking about the state actors, then you'll be referring to the uh, licensed uh, security agents and the armed forces, talking about the Army, the Naval, and the Air Force. Mm -hmm. All of this put together, the amount of small arms and light weapons that they carry it's not up to what you find in the hands of the non-state actors, like the terrorists, the armed robbers, the uh, bandits, the uh, those who do communal clashes, those who do have communal conflicts and all of that. Cultists, they all fall under the banner of the non-state uh, actors. Now, the basic problem that Nigerian, Nigeria as a country, just like some other countries, has suffered is the issue of the proliferation of small arms and light weapons that are largely circulating across the country, that are largely available to these non-state actors, that are largely being used to commit all kinds of crimes, superior power, and then, like you, just like you talk about uh, what happened in uh, the Plateau State, beyond these arms that are, that finds their way into this country through our porous borders, particularly up north, mm -hmm. you also have we also have the problem of these firearms being manufactured locally by the local blacksmiths, and today they have gotten so sophisticated. Mm -hmm. To the extent that sometimes it becomes a challenge differentiating locally manufactured firearms mm. in Nigeria from the factory uh, manufactured firearms that are imported into this country. Let, let, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm challenge. sorry, I need to come in there, Mr. Moro. Um, I remember that um, just um, when the um, former president, good luck, Jonathan, was president. There was a, a, a move at the time for state governors across the country to mop up weapons. It was called a form of disarmament. Um, and many, many had ridiculed that disarmament as a child's play, being that they said the, the arms that were being presented was nothing compared to those that were still being held on to by some of these militants. And you're talking about the proliferation of small arms and now, of course, the manufacturing, illegal manufacturing of locally made pistols and guns. Um, again, let's talk about body language. Body language is very important in fighting insecurity anywhere in the world. From the body language of the president, the sitting president, Muhammad Buhari, uh, in dealing with this proliferation and in dealing with security generally, could that also have a role to play in why this issue of insecurity has lingered for this long? Can you take the question specifically again? I'm talking about body language in dealing with this issue of insecurity and, of course, um, the, the mopping up of these illegal arms across the country. I'm asking, um, does the body language of the president have a role to play in how this issue has gone so far and why it has lingered for so long? Yeah, apparently, um, very well, very correct. If you if you look at the first coming of uh, Mr. President between 2015 and 2019, the level of insecurity we suffered so hard. When Mr. President first, uh, when he, when he was sworn in, at when he made his inaugural speech, he did make a statement. His body language was obvious then that he was out to fight insecurity, which was only limited to terrorism as, as, as involved Boko Haram then. On, on, on that ground, he did immediately ask that wars cannot be going on in the Southeast, and then the military 
the commanders will be sitting in their offices in Abuja. And so he did say that the situation room should immediately move and the, 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 the commanding base should also move to the northeast. That gave a lot of courage and fear signals to the, the to Boko Haram to say, yes, for once, we, for, for now, we have a security officer in charge as president who was now ready to take them headlong. If you remember that, but what did we get after that? All of that summered and it came down and then the, 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 the war ravaged. Fast forward to 20, the, between 2019 and now, last year precisely, he gave a marching order to the chiefs, the military chiefs, and said that he would want everything about insecurity to be put to an end by December. We saw that between October and December, when he made that statement, when he gave a marching order to the security chiefs, that the level of insecurity dropped drastically. We were no longer waking up to hear about bombings, except for pockets of activities by the bandits mm -hmm. in the Northwest. And then activities of uh, the unknown government in the in the southeast. Okay. And then, if you if you check the number of persons that died from the act of terrorism and from bandits and what happened in the southeast, it dropped drastically. Okay. But again, shortly after the elections, what did we get? We started, we started hearing about killings, about, about, about like what is happening, going on, currently going on now in uh, Benue State, mm. what, ha what is going on in uh, Plateau State, talking about the North Central region. Yeah. Now, where you have basically problems more of intercommunal clashes, okay. uh, tribal wars, um, uh, what, what you call farmers, headers, Issues. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Moyo, because we do not have time, unfortunately, uh, our time is fast spent. I will bring you back because we need to talk about what the next president has to do, um, especially talking about body language and, of course, matching it with actions. What needs to be done to, to deal with this insecurity or to put it at bay? But I want to thank you for coming on. Darlington Momo Moro is a former consultant to the Presidential uh, Committee on Small Arms and Light Weapons Prescom. I want to thank you so much. We'll bring you back again tomorrow, definitely, to continue this conversation. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight. I want to thank you all for being part of the conversation. As we count down to May 29, conversations are going to be had, of course, setting the agenda for the incoming administration. I'm Mary Anna. See you tomorrow at 7. Good night.